certainly uh, uh, it's a lot easier coming in here this Tuesday. Uh, got some things accomplished last week. Really, really proud of our football team and the way they competed on the road, but uh, uh, even more proud of our fans and the way they supported us and, and showed up. It was a uh, uh, it was dang near home game for us, and uh, that's exciting when you in Nashville, Tennessee, and see that many Aggies. Last Saturday, Texas A&M took over at Nashville. With Fords of the 12th man looking on, the Aggies shut out Vanderbilt. This weekend, the hostilities will be aimed at A&M as they travel to LSU. Kevin, since LSU, quote the old rivalry, new rivalry, what would a win mean to the program and what would a win mean to you? I think it's a, a, a big deal for our fans and a big deal for, you know, these seniors. These are the, the pioneers. These are the first, this is the first group that's, that's come into this league. I met with them on Monday just about where they were and, and what's important to them and the expectations that these guys have set uh, for this program are, are, are a lot higher than they were when I got here. They've won 36 games in, in uh, four years. This could, 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 could get them to 37, the ninth game, and, and, and possibility of two double-digit seasons in, in their four years. That's where this program has come. These guys have a lot to do with that. Uh, that being said, this is the one program that they haven't beaten in the West. As a member of the SEC, the Aggies haven't scratched the Tigers yet. This isn't lost on this team, especially the ones who hail from Louisiana. I do circle this game. You know, it's, it is personal. I'm sure it's personal for uh, a lot of the pe uh, guys on the team knowing that we haven't beat them yet. And, uh, I know it's personal because a lot of these guys are from Louisiana. So uh, I do circle this. And I believe a lot of other people do. Most of my family root for them, and then when we play them, some of them still root for them. So uh, I try to do my best to beat them so, uh, to make my family members mad. Probably 90% of my family are LSU fans. So to go back and, and get a win against a team like that would be great. And then probably another big part of it is recruiting because I spent a lot of my time recruiting in Louisiana. And so uh, bringing our brand to the state and getting a win will be huge. Uh, we both in the same conference, uh, so it, it's like a rivalry. All games are important, but this one uh, got a little torch under me, and to me it's like a little bit special. I'm just ready to uh, play it for my family and, you know, ball out. The time for talk is over. Only actions get you out of Death Valley alive. Good job this week. Great job of preparation again. Okay, good job scout team, good looks from everybody. We're going on the road. Create energy. It starts with the people here. Okay, national TV, chance to end up our regular season the way we want to end it up. How physical you are, right, the plays that you make, let's make sure that that's what you want. Okay, cut it loose tomorrow. The Polls, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Memorial Herman. Official sports medicine partner of Texas A&M Athletics. All right, hey, listen. Bring the energy, right? Just like last week. Bring the energy, and like B. Will talked about last night. Energy and attitude. Attitude. The time you step on that, off that bus to the time we walk out of there. You got to understand what a privilege it is to be a part of a brotherhood. Tonight, we need to represent this brotherhood. And we need to play that way. Every man in this room. Tiger Stadium has a Roman Coliseum feel to it. The Aggies are fully aware it might take a gladiator-like effort to prevail. Sacrifice everything! Yes, sir, let's get it! Hey, be great! Always compete. Leave a legacy. Let's get it. It's our life. Let's get it. It's time to go play, dog. It ain't time to look back. It ain't time to think about nothing. It ain't time to worry about nothing. It's time to go play football, dog. They don't respect us. Uh-huh. Now, nah, we gonna show them tonight, baby. Let's hunt on three. One, two, three. Let's hunt. Coming out is Speedy Noy. Louisiana native. 
and he doesn't make the best decision to start this game. Four-man Tiger Rush, they open with an incomplete pass. It'll be second and ten. Double teamed, incomplete, make it third down for Davius White. Play action, moves off to his right and incomplete, and it's three and out on the opening series of the game for the Aggies. And because of field position, LSU is going to be in good shape. Harris. Drops it off down low to Fournette, 45. Spins at the 40 to the 36-yard line for a first down. Safety valve pays off for Harris. The LSU's win against the Aggies last year. They ran for 384 yards. The year before that, 324 yards. So they are making their intentions clearly known tonight. We are running right at them. Short drop. Fires toward the end zone. Jump ball. Incomplete. Excellent coverage by Harris. Harris from the gun. Deflected. Incomplete. And that forces a fourth down. And the 32-yarder is on the money. And this is Christian Kirk who's going to come out. The electric freshman. Fumble! LSU recovers. Two kickoffs, both disasters. Play action, and you're going to bring Geis around on an end around, and he's thrown for a loss back at the 25. And so again, LSU's offense stalls down, and they'll have to settle for a second field goal attempt here, Jesse. You fumble the kickoff return. LSU's got the ball on your doorstep, and you force a three and out like that. That is a total win for John Chavis in this dig. Down 6 nothing early, the defense is doing damage control. They've survived Death Valley to this point, but A&M won't for long if the offense doesn't thrive. On second down, play action. Allen goes deep down the far sideline, got one on one, and Reynolds stays with it and makes an outstanding catch at the 18-yard line against freshman Kevin Tolliver. Allen. As time fires complete, and it'll be close to a first down across the 10 yard line. Josh Reynolds, so it will be first and goal after the Reynolds catch. They send motion with White. Pump fake comes to the middle, grab, and that was Seals Jones touchdown. And the Aggies an extra point away from taking their first lead of the night. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Pepsi, official soft drink of Texas A&M athletics. So this is going to be a third down. You got to imagine there's no mystery here. Quick huddle, expect number seven. Mouton, the lead blocker. And not going to get it. Everybody in the stadium, 11 Aggies ready for that. <laughs> Washington. Hit him first. And give AM credit for getting lined up quickly. That time, LSU tried to surprise them with a quick huddle and a quick snap. Texas AM got in their three point stance and fired off the football. The 25 yard attempt. Ooh. Plank, no good. Big uplift for the Aggies. The defense continues to hold their own and keep LSU out of the end zone. For the most part, LSU is doing the same. A stalemate ensues. Need to reach the 41-yard line for a first down. Kyle Allen in trouble. Pocket collapses. Sack at the 20-yard line. Taking over at the LSU 35 just before halftime, Kyle Allen starts to take control of the offense. Kevin Sumlin ready to go here with a first and 10 on his own 35-yard line. Kyle Allen on 
first down. He hits Christian Kirk, the freshman. Midfield, 45, out to the 40. And Jesse, you think that young man's going to be the freshman of the year in the conference? I do. And I was just about to say to get this offense a spark, you need to get this guy the football in as many creative ways as possible. You just saw what he can do after the catch. Kirk goes in motion. Three receivers to Allen's left. He checks, steps up, keeps it on the run. 15 and slides down at the 12 yard line. Ball goes down on the ground. LSU jumps on it. He got hit from behind by Beckwith. Number 52 right there. It's a great job in pass rush. And LSU is going to get possession of this football deep in their own end. It's an alley and breaks free at the 35. Sensational return. The young man won't go down, won't be denied. One of the great runs of the season. And you just got to capitalize in this situation if you're Brandon Harris and you're LSU. Nice job by Texas A&M. They got Miles Garrett, the best pass rusher in the SEC, lined up. One on one pass rush and it's no contest. Domang with a 46 yard field goal attempt. Leaves it out to the right. And he's missed three in a row now after hitting his first two. Now the Aggies take over at the 29. And then they run Carson up the middle. Here comes White. Cut back. So the chains move. They motion White out. And they bring an end around off a lateral trying to influence. This is Kirk. Steps to the 35 and out of bounds. On third down. Allen couldn't find a receiver. Now he is forced to throw it high. And it was almost caught over there on that far side. Now he'll try to make a 54 yarder. Off to the right, missed it. And he'll give it to Geis coming around the left side. Daylight, he had the great kickoff return. Put it on the board. 50 yards after a 75 yard kickoff return that led to nothing. Guy said, we'll leave nothing to chance this time. I'm taking it to the house. Come on, stay in. Gotta keep playing. The Polls. Texas A&M football is brought to you by ASCO, your place for case construction equipment in Texas. 15 minutes remain on the SEC schedule. This game is as Western Division as it gets. Someone must step to the forefront. First down and 15. Here's Fournette who will be among those who come back. And he battles his way out to the 27 yard line. First down run by Leonard Fournette to the 40 yard line. Into the middle, breaking free. You know, Jesse, the one thing that great running backs always seem to have, as the game wears on, they get stronger and stronger. Second down and two, and here's Fournette. Reaching for another first down, and this is a this is a quality drive right now. Swing, Fournette. 30, 25, first down, red zone. The defense has been stout, standing up when it counts. Eventually, though, that someone who stood out was vaunted Tiger running back, Leonard Fournette. The 
the effort was there, not the result. The Aggies still haven't solved the Tigers in conference play. Well, you know, we had some issues. We turned it over three times. Did not uh, operate very well on third down. What were we? Um, four of 15. Four of 15, you know, which for what we do, that's important. We've talked about that. And then we got in a situation where we had to drop back and we had problems and issues in protection from the quarterback. You know, it's kind of hard when, when uh, a quarterback couldn't set his feet and get the ball downfield. So, you know, but six minutes to go, it's a... Uh, it's, it's, it's a it's still a six-point game. You know, in the fourth quarter, you, know, you got a football game going, and you know they they closed it out. And we didn't. I just know how bad Coach Davis wanted it. Uh, I know Coach Davis isn't from Louisiana, but he spent so much time here. You know, I'm from Louisiana too, so I just I just we didn't play well enough for him. Just just feel bad for him. It, it's always tough to sit with a loss, you know, whether it's for a bowl game or anything else. Uh, it's always hard to. You know, bounce back from a loss, but you know, if you bounce back, you should come back greater. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Taking a back seat to the headline was John Chavis's return to LSU on Saturday. He's forced a dose of SEC toughness upon the defense since arriving in Aggieland. When the Tigers notched the third quarter touchdown, it stopped a string of over nine straight quarters of play in which A&M hadn't allowed a TD. Anybody who's watched us the last couple of years knows that you know, our defense has really improved. Uh, first shutout a week ago in 11 years, uh, really playing well till the end. You know, we just ran out of gas. We had to do some things if we could have done anything to help them offensively. You know, they probably would have had a little bit more spark there in, the, in that last quarter. You know, but you look up and six minutes to go um, in the fourth quarter, it's still a one-score game. And uh, the one thing I can say that I'm really, really proud of about our guys is they, they've played hard all year. But ultimately, Texas A&M left the bayou, still blanked in the SEC win column versus LSU. And you kind of mentioned to the younger guys, remember the feeling. They yeah. know the feeling of a defeat in a big game. I said that because I think, you know, a lot of times in, in our society, uh, the way things are right now, guys just move on to the next deal. And uh, it's always been said, young people move on quicker than, than older folks all the time. They're on to the next thing and on their phone, on the bus and ready to go, you know. But uh, uh, I thought it was important for guys to really capture what that feels like, walking off that field uh, in a game that uh, uh, we could have won and should have won. 